Listen, I know Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just came out, but the fact is we're gonna get DLC and I think we're going to Kalos. Let's take a look. All right, if you haven't been following the leaks that we've been covering for months and months and months, Riddler Koo is our inside man and he has put out some really interesting information regarding the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We got all sorts of leaks, we got breakdowns to go into Kalos and much, much more, so stay tuned because we're going down the rabbit hole, baby. It's gonna be wild. So first things first, Riddler Koo comes out and says the DLC has new cool features. We have no chance to know them in advance. I'll reveal a little bit, like PK Hex-like features. For those who don't know, PK Hex is a program that was created to basically hack Pokemon, essentially, right? So you could change their nature, IVs, stats, moves, everything like that, and you can do legality checks to make sure that they work within the confines of the game. So it could be, finally, for competitive Pokemon, an opportunity to really change your Pokemon and get them competitive ready in a way that's never been done before. So that's something really exciting, and this is, again, another sign towards DLC. Ku then goes on to say, third legendary already posted it. And a lot of people were like, wait, what's that? And there's been a lot of thoughts that the third legendary is actually tied to the little face that's on the Terrastal hats. If you look at all the Terrastal hats, there's like two little eyes that are like kind of on the little crystal on their head. And a lot of people are speculating that that has something to do with the third legendary. So let's keep diving down the rabbit hole. Then Riddler Ku posts, one of them is different, which, and it's a picture of Mega Evolution, Z moves, Gigantamax and Dynamax and Terra or Terrastalization. And Ku says, this is a DLC riddle in every sense, by the way. Someone then goes to say, it's okay, tell me the answer. And he says, Mega. So Mega is the one that's different. Why is Mega different? Well, unfortunately, we don't know. Then goes on to post another picture of Mega Evolution, Ultra Necrozma, uh, Eternatus, and then, of course, the Terra Crystal image that I was talking about earlier, where it very clearly looks like there's kind of eyes in that Terra Crystal thing. So a lot of things that are pointing towards DLC, Mega Evolution, Hints from the Riddler who has a very long-standing proven track record. So let's switch gears and talk about why Kalos, right? But before I go any further, I gotta tell you guys about my project, Elestrals. If you have not been following it, I created my own monster franchise called Elestrals, which is live on Kickstarter right now and only live for another two days. So don't miss it. We've raised almost 1.2 million dollars on this game we've got incredible monsters an incredible card game that's fun to pick up for people who've never played card games or experts we're building something really special with the community and i would love to have you get involved you can pledge to get a starter deck at just 25 dollars, and you get all of these free cards and a free enamel pin for our new spirit so please check out the link in the description below and back our kickstarter the time is running out this is a chance to be at the beginning the inception of a brand new monster franchise that your boy created I'm the only owner. This is my project, and I would love to have you a part of it. So check it out. Go to Kickstarter and back Elestrals today. Like I said, just $25 gets you a starter deck and over 18 free promo cards. So don't miss it. So you already know I love Soul Silver's tweets, and he says, I've had this DLC theory since July. I wasn't posting it because I didn't want to spoil too much. But Barcelona and Catalonia aren't actually present in Cur Curran Paldia. And you kind of look at the uh, map breakdown of these different areas, Valencia, Barcelona, uh, kind of what all that looks like and how it all kind of connects uh, in the grand scheme of where Spain is. If you don't know that, obviously, Paldia is based on uh, Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. But we take it a step further. And if you're actually playing the game, you recognize that the map shows this, like, special area in the top right uh, hand side of the map where it's got like these lines and you can't actually climb the walls there. It's actually kind of funny. You can't climb the walls to get to the next area there. And when you go to Arvin's room, Soul Silver points this out, that in Arvin's room, there's a poster that actually has that landmass up there, which is really wild. Like that's not part of Paldia. That, that's not part of the map that we have now, but it shows the landmass up there. So that could be something really significant, obviously. And then even further, one of these crazy things is Lucario and Light posting on Twitter that if you go to that area, that inaccessible area in the top right corner of the map, there are different dragon tamers that you can face. There's three different dragon tamers, and they have the Pokemon Gudra, Noivern, and Dragalge as their three Pokemon. What is so common or interesting about those particular Pokemon? Those are the three dragon Pokemon from the Kalos region. So you've got these different characters that are standing on the border of where we're expecting Kalos to be, and they have these uh, dragon Pokemon that are from native that region. So that could just be like a lore thing, but again, another sign pointing to it, but we're not even at the best part. One other little tidbit of information that I'll mention is like Volcania never truly got its spotlight in Kalos, and they ended up ripping Scald out of the move pool of like every single Pokemon and made it an exclusive move for Volcania. Why would they do that? Could it just be a balancing thing to make chilling water or whatever it's called a better move? Or was it something pointing towards a little bit more light for Volcanion if we do get some more Kalos action. 
And now we're getting to the good stuff. You guys didn't know, there's a theory that really ties all this together regarding the third legendary. In the Scarlet and Violet book on the last page, there's this kind of egg image, which we did talk about previously. The scales are hexagonal. Soul Silver says hexagonal or hexagonal plates, which sounds a lot like Zygarde, right? When you think of hexagons in the Pokemon space, I immediately think to Zygarde, which is the third legendary of the Kalos region. So we've also got this big tie-in of Paradox Pokemon and things like that. Could this new third legendary be based off of Zygarde? Like, could we see like a past and future form of Zygarde? And that's really what the legendary is here when we look at kind of the full scope of things. Then we get further in-game confirmation of these hexagonal plates in the late game uh, in one of the area zero bases. So this is the cause of the energy crystallization. And it basically says we've determined that this energy crystallization is linked to the being we call the interlocking hexagonal plates that uh, comprise this thing's shell must somehow cause this. So there's a big tie in here to all of this. This is not just like random stuff, right? Like there's a lot of things that are pointing towards Zygarde having some importance here and being a part of what could be DLC and the third legendary. And just to summarize some of these points from Soul Silver, we have confirmation of DLC through the leaker. There's Kalos initials in the code. There's a hole in the map of Paldia that could lead to the Pyrenees. You've got Paldia and Kalos are stuck. There's a strange creature with hexagonal scales hidden in the pit. I mean, what more could you ask for? It seems as though we are headed down this rabbit hole where a Zygarde is gonna be at the end of it. And again, going back to kind of that egg image that was in the last page of the Scarlet and Violet book, we see some other people on the internet like PK Sept making some connections, really kind of connecting the dots of how this all could line up together to really ultimately be Zygarde or some sort of connection to Zygarde. Bakugan says, disregarding the letter amount, with the Hexagon and the Ouroboros S creature, it does tie in slightly to Zygarde 50% form. It could be based on Jormungandr, which you gotta bear with me on that one, dwelling in the world, sea encircling the earth, having bit its own tail. Further, Almighty Arceus says, interesting to see Hexagons come back for the third legendary Pokemon, since that's the signature shape of Zygarde uh, from X and Y. The crown as well, I wonder if this is some kind of Zygarde form but it may be related somehow. And again, that could very much so tie to basically what we're looking at with the Paradox forms. One other thing to mention, this is a little bit of a stretch, but when you find out that Area Zero, the same initials happen to be AZ. And if you guys remember, AZ was the really big dude in Kalos that like started the Kalos War and like launched this gigantic weapon off and had his Floet basically bail on him, right? Like there's a lot of pieces here. Like this is just, the, the tip of the iceberg, right? Like Area Zero, AZ, Floet. I mean, there's so many things going on with this. It's actually bonkers. And I really think we're onto something here. And the last thing I'll mention to kind of summarize everything is Riddler Crew on November 7th said, do you think AZ's Floet makes it this time? And if you remember, going all the way back to Kalos, AZ's Floet was in the code, but it was never actually released. Could that be a sign? So I know we've gone down this big adventure here as to why I think we could get a Kalos DLC why Zygarde is so important here as a potential third legendary, maybe as a paradox form, and why all this other stuff is interconnected with this third legendary, Kalos, Mega Evolution. I mean, it's actually pretty wild. AZ, I mean, it's just, you really see, see all the pieces. I feel like that meme with the guy in front of the board with all the things. But that's that, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to back Alestrals on Kickstarter. You only got like two days to do it. And we've already raised 1.2 million almost. So don't miss out on it. We're doing something really special. I'd love to have you be a part of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.